speakers from the industry, and the details of these activities will be included in the next six monthly report. For now, uh, this report is um, taken as read, and I'm happy to answer any of your questions. Thank you. Thanks, Gabrielle. First questions from Councillor Johnson. Thanks, Madam Chair. Uh, thanks for the report, Gabrielle. Um, I'm just interested if there are any uh, KPIs or measurements of success that are a bit more, um, I guess, numbers oriented as opposed to the narrative report that, that we've got in front of us. Are there any sort of measurable KPIs that, um, that you're working to? Thank you, Councillor, for your question. So uh, if you have a look at the uh, way that um, the report is um, presented, uh, there will be the, what we, the part where uh, it says what we want to achieve, and that's taken directly off the international relations chapter of the economic development plan. And that, those are the KPIs that we work um, towards. Uh, in everything that we do. Uh, whether or not it's um, measurable it, it is uh, dependent on how we define the success of um, relationships. Okay. Um, and so, is there any uh, sort of measurable um, economic impact done or any measurable any other measurable thing that's done to determine whether or not the activities are, are successful? Um, so, under international relations, we have international relations and we have international education. Now, with international relations, we are focused on connecting um, our communities to our partners overseas, and uh, it is unfortunately not up to us to um, dictate the success of those um, connections. Uh, it's very much up to um, the communities to take advantage and to leverage uh, the connections that we foster for them um, to determine whether this is the um, direction that they would like to take. Uh, with international education, it, it is sort of a similar story because as much as we want to uh, create and promote um, the profile of our city and our region as the preferred study destination for international students, we are uh, unable to be responsible for the recruitment activities of individual um, edu um, education providers. So. Um, I think in, in that regard, we can see the success of our activities through the connections that we um, help make, but uh, not in the sense of percentage of students recruited or the businesses that actually can be generated in dollar value. Okay, so um, how would we know as the governors that we were getting a good return on our investment into this area? Um, I am definitely open for suggestion, uh, Councillor, if there is uh, a very good way for us to, um, that councillors uh, would, would like for us to um, set as KPIs. Uh, I'm happy for that discussions to happen and, and take direction. Thank I, you. I think um, the assistant, I'm not sure. Chief Planning Officer would like to answer that question. <laughs> Sorry about that, Dan. Yeah, uh, if I could just assist. I guess economic development activity in general is notoriously difficult to, to monitor um, and that it's, um, there's, not to, there's not always a direct correlation between uh, the activities and, and the outputs that are happening on the ground. It's sometimes about stimulating economic activity. Um, certainly our international relations activity is more than just economic development as well. It's, um, there's a whole lot of social, cultural uh, benefits that come from that. Uh, what I can suggest is, you know, a, a, as we did this morning, point to the LTP process that's coming up, and it may well be an opportunity for us to reflect on the way in which we're measuring um, the, the activities undertaken by the international relations and education team. But um, at this stage, as... Uh, um, Gabrielle has stated that the way we're assessing uh, performance is based on, the, on those outcomes in the plan. Okay, thank you. 
Thanks, Councillor Johnson. My uh, next question is from me. Um, just looking at your next steps on page 27, um, so you've got a few next steps there. Um, how long will it take you to do some of these next steps? Are they the next steps for the next six months or the next steps for the next year? What's your anticipated time frame over the ne those next steps? Thank you. So as much as we uh, would like to say that all of these next steps are planned for the next six months, um, it, it is also dependable on the conversation that we have with our overseas partners. So within our control, these are intended for the next six months. Okay, thank you. And um, of those next steps, which would be the hardest one to, to achieve? Sorry, I have a, a different um, set of paging numbers. Um, so my one goes from one to 16. So I'm, I'd just like to ask uh, you to clarify which next steps. Page 27. Page 27. The water paper. Yes. Sorry. Um, yes, yeah, so um, that is um, mostly for the um, trip. The trip to Vietnam? Yep. Yep, that will be the hardest the one. The trip to, to Vietnam and, and Japan. Uh, the, the reason why I, I would pick this one as um, probably a, a little bit more difficult to put together is because um, Education New Zealand is the um, the organization that puts together the calendar and we have no control over that. So at the moment, all we have is tentative dates and therefore all the planning has been on hold until that date um, is confirmed. Okay, thank you so much for those answers. And we've got um, Councillor Michelard next. Thank you, Madam Chair. And thanks, Gabriel, for the report. I think just want to clarify um, not clarify, but trying to seek some understanding around um, the second paragraph on page 14 where you say that we've increased our engagement with relevant government agencies like Immigration New Zealand and Education New Zealand, as well as the diplomatic corps in Wellington to identify opportunities for our city's growth areas to advocate for potential mitigation current risks and challenges and expand networks with potential international partners. Just want to ask what sort of... Um, a solution have come out of these, meet these meetings in relation to international, um, I mean, the shortage in skills and international education? Thank you for your question. Um, so we have definitely um, placed a, a very um, strong importance on, on building up rapport with the international um, diplomatic course over in uh, Wellington. And one of the things that came out of that uh, was um, the Agritech Business Connect luncheon that happened uh, last week, uh, which I did mention earlier, that is gonna be detailed in the next six monthly report. So uh, we um, definitely build up that uh, connection with them and also engage with our community over here and see what are the key uh, area that we want to um, focus on uh, from the community's uh, needs and wants and then we'll, we'll match as much as possible and bring those opportunity um, to us. So uh, after the luncheon last week, uh, the conversation that we are currently having with the talents and skills manager, um, advisor, sorry, uh, over in CEDA is how we can utilize the connection that we are making with Israel to uh, address the skill shortage that our current IT um, sector in Manawatu is facing. So that's one of the examples that we are, uh, we are doing at yeah, the moment. Good to know. Thank you. Mr. Karatiana. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, just a couple of comments and then a question, but uh, firstly, just on behalf of, Manawatu, of Rangitani or Manawatu, I'd just like to acknowledge the level of engagement and um, involvement we've had in, in recent times from you. Thank you very much. Um, and also comp to compliment you on the function to um, celebrate the um, relationship with Missoula at Turangi Marie. Thank you. Um, just a question about uh, Kunshan. 
Um, in the mid-90s, I went to Kunshan with the mayor to establish a new relationship, and I just wondered where that relationship had got to. Um, thank you very much for, for your comments, and uh, definitely Kunshan is uh, a very important um, strategic uh, partner for, for us. Um, our last conversation with Kunshan was that uh, they were looking for um, a few uh, key people in the wetland um, management area, and uh, at that time, uh, we were not in in the um, um, let's say in in the high priority list of partners that they were uh, really looking for. So we have said um, that well, this is to the most extent that we can help you with but uh, let's re-engage uh, a little bit later in the year uh, with um, areas of cooperation that are closer to our growth strategic um, uh, sectors of the Manawatu region and, and our city. Um, Councillor Naylor. Thank you. Um, on page 27 under the next steps, there's one bullet point there that talks about um, engaging with local agents for family trips to Palmerston North and explore opportunities to promote our regional offers. I'm just trying to understand a little bit more about what that is meaning or what the purpose of that is. Uh, thank you, Councillor. And uh, that is actually... Um, um, typo for, from autocorrect, it's actually a famil trips, so familiarization, uh, trips for agents, and the idea of those trips are to introduce our region and the city's offers in terms of education to the recruitment agents so that they can represent and promote our region better when they go and do their recruitment activities. Oh, that makes a bit more sense, thank you. <laughs> That's all the questions. Thank you very much, Gabrielle. Thank you for your report. Right, we go to the recommendation. Sorry. Um, I'd like to move the recommendation. I'll just read it out that the committee note the progress on the international relations and education activity over the past six months, contributing to the economic development plan and innovation and growth growing city strategy. I'll move it, seconded by Councillor Denison. And I'll look for comments. First off, we've got comments from the Mayor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, apologies for, I, I was in the wrong meeting a little bit before, so coming on a little bit late. Um, look, just want to congratulate um, the officers. Um, it's been hard work um, in uh, you know, difficult COVID times, and um, most of all, and just about all of this work um, is online, and it's um, testament to the standing relationships that former mayors and councils have set up um, that allows the city to um, keep partnering with its um, international partners. Um, but domestically, um, it's also good relationships that we've uh, forged with um, not only ministries, but the diplomatic corps. Um, I've been told that... Uh, from uh, the Dean of the Diplomatic Corps that outside Waitangi Day, uh, the Palmerston North Festival for Cultures is their top event in Wall for, for, Welling for the Wellington-based Diplomatic Corps to come um, or to, to attend. So I think that's testament um, to the work that we've done. There was a couple of questions around KPIs and, um, and look, as somebody that works or leads in this space, it sometimes is hard to sort of quantify hard quantifiable um, measures, um, but it is an ecosystem and it really does take, um, uh, we're the enabler and it does take some work. I can tell you now that um, uh, our workforce has um, been impacted positively because of the city's um, position on internationalism. The healthcare um, sector, and mid, mid central, the, the former mid central DHB, 60% of its workforce is international. And actually, having a strong um, city that's focused on internationalism, supporting a multicultural um, council and different events um, all go hand in hand. Uh, you see that in science and research as well, where there's a lot of international people here who feel really comfortable um, coming to Palmerston North, which has a more worldly. 
um, outlook than, say, the Napiers, the Nelsons, uh, the New Plymouths, and even the Hamiltons. So I think we've got something to be proud of. Um, also, international trade, we can't forget. Um, we can't, sometimes we can't measure that. Uh, but I do, and I, I do know along Tremaine Avenue and different parts of the industrial areas of Palmerston North, uh, international work um, has been exported. And it's great to see companies like Norse Kaiser um, getting international contracts um, and on the back of our international reputation. But also foreign investments. You know, we've seen the Italians investing um, in New Zealand pharmaceuticals, the Japanese with um, Toyota, uh, New Zealand and IPU, and I'll touch on international education in a moment, um, but also the Malaysians um, with the uh, motor truck dis distributor group. I mean, there's so much um, that flies under the radar, which sometimes um, isn't visible to the public and indeed councillors. So um, also just on international education, if we didn't have an international programme, I think we would have possibly lost a tertiary organisation during the COVID uh, pandemic, um, and certainly others would have been uh, more impacted than they are now. So congratulations to the officers. I think they've done a really good job and, and quite trying times. And um, yeah, I ask you to support this. Thank you. And there's no other comments, but just comments from me. Thank you very much for all your work that you've done in the international space. Um, the recent visit we had from our international diplomats was really really well supported and you did a really good job so thank you very much for that so with that I'll look to um, call the vote thank you everyone That's passed with 14 votes for, so thank you very much for that, everyone. We'll move to the next item, which is item number seven in your paper, and we'll ask um, Stacey to come forward. Um, is Khan coming as well? Just yourself, Stacey. Okay, thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome to our council. And welcome to your new role here. Thank you. Lovely, thank you. Uh, for those that don't know me, my name is Stacey Bell. I've recently taken up the role here of City Economist. I was previously at Manawatu District Council for just over six years. So yes, I'm happy to be here to present to you today. I understand a lot of you have seen the presentation from the Joint Strategic, so I am going to skip through the parts that people have seen before and focus on some new information that Kian and I have provided for this presentation. But if there's any questions, happy to answer. Are we happy to take the reports as read? Yep. So today I'll be doing an update on economic performance, having a quick look at economic headwinds. They haven't changed particularly since the last time, so we'll skip through that, and then the outlook for the city economy. So the diversity of the city economy, again, uh, continues to support economic activity. I have done a bit of a breakdown there of the tw 12 largest sectors in the city, and uh, luckily we have quite an, an even match between public and private sector industries, which has really supported economic activity in the city over the last two and a half years in particular, over these challenging times. So we've had very high employment and earnings growth. Um, from that, consumer spending has held up well and well above the national average. Finally, we're seeing a uh, recovering event sector, which is great to see again after a very tough time. Commodity prices very high and expected to continue to stay high. On the upside, we have improving housing affordability, but with that, of course, does see a softening of house prices, which has been expected. And in terms of the long term, investment and construction activity is very favourable. So 1.2% economic growth over the year to June versus 0.9% for New Zealand. Uh, our labour force data does reflect the high employment and also labour supply shortages. So as we can see from this, our employed residents grew by 960 over the year to June, which is very strong, and we have record low unemployment at 2.8%. Job seeker benefits are on the way down, as they are nationally, but they're falling um, further here than what they are at the national level. Earnings increased by 8.2%, which is incredibly strong, and um, this does compare with 6% growth nationally. Interesting, regional job ads are up 12.3% from June 2021 and 60.7% from June 2019. 
following on from Gabrielle's presentation. Today, uh, data was released for August that showed that just over 8,000 residents had come into the country on working visas. So this has been increasing since February, which is strong compared to what we've seen in a number of years. Still got a way to go, however, because back in August 2019, we had, we had over 20,000. But we do really do need those workers to come into the country to provide for those roles. In particular, in our region, IT, healthcare services, and tourism are the ones that are really needing our workers at, at this present time. So consumer spending has held up very well, and this is till August, so up 6.7% in the year um, versus August versus New Zealand, I apologise, at 3.1%. As expected, fuel and, fuel and automotive very strong because of the increase in petrol costs. Uh, but we've also seen a very strong increase in arts, recreation and visitor transport, 11%. So it's very, very promising to see that money is flowing back into those sectors that have done it tough for quite some time. Other consumer spending up 10.5%, so that again is our uh, predominantly cars and trailers and those types of goods. Groceries and liquor are strong and home and recreational as well above the national average. So with our high um, income growth and employment growth, we are seeing that flow through to demand from our retailers. Just skipping through this, great to see this graph. I really like this one. It really shows after the tough time that we've had over the three previous quarters that we're seeing that recovery flow through into our data and we expect that to continue. I'll just, yeah, I'll, I'll touch on this briefly, but again, our uh, food prices, our uh, commodity prices for food produced in the region is very, very strong at the moment. It has come off the peak of, of March, but still very strong, up 11.7% over the year to August. Uh, 2022 in terms of our trade. We also had a very positive um, global dairy tra trade auction result overnight at 2%, 2 and because our dollar is down at 0.58 US, which is incredibly low, uh, that um, trans transfers to about 4.2% increase in the value of that global dairy trade auction in New Zealand dollar terms. So it's favourable to see and has, again, is one of the strengths that we've had in Palmerston North and the wider region in terms of supporting economic activity over this difficult two and a half years that we've had. So this is interesting. We're seeing quite an improvement in housing affordability from 7.1 times the average income to 6.6 .6 over the year to June, which is a very strong increase in affordability uh, for, for Palmerston North City. That's not just being driven by softening house prices, it's also being driven by uh, strong increases in incomes as well. So it's on both sides of the equation. I have put up these two data sets here which show the average residential house values relative to the median. So the median always shows a much higher um, decline. We can see that um, for Palmerston North City in particular at 14.6%, whereas the annual percentage change for the median price was 35 what that shows us is that there are more properties being sold at the average or lower quartile values than what there is nationally. So we'll be keeping a close eye on this data because it is interesting to see, see the change, but having the softening in the lower quartile prices is positive in a social sense because it improves affordability for our families and in particular at a time when we're wanting to attract workers into our region to take up the many jobs on offer. But we will, Kian and I will be keeping a close eye on this data and bring it back and update you quarterly. So we know all about inflation. I won't, I won't re-litigate that one, except to say that the, the food price data came in a couple of days ago at 8.3% year on year to August, very strong, 14.5% increase in food, um, fruit and vegetables, which was the highest increase. Mortgage and business lending costs, costs we know they're on the up, although um, there are some commentators that are saying that fixed mortgage rates are plateauing now, but there are, the commentary changes daily on this, so it's very, very volatile at the moment. Expenditure <coughs> on cars and commercial vehicles has really weakened, especially in the June quarter, and we know that construction sector activity has softened, and also that tight labour markets are continuing to affect our businesses. So rental prices are slower to respond. So in the graph, we see the difference between house price growth relative to rental weekly rental price growth. We have had a softening of rental price growth, but it's still higher than what we would like to see. Uh, rental stocks are also declining slightly by 24. Ideally, with market conditions at the moment, we would like to see that rental stock actually increasing. As there's lower um, returns to capital, we would want landlords to be releasing their properties to the formal rental market for people to live in. Um, we're not seeing a lot of that yet, but again, another uh, indicator that we're keeping a close eye on 
to monitor progress. Public housing register is up a little bit over the year. Um, New Zealand's still up well over 2,000 uh, over the year, 8.9%. Um, We're up 4.5%. Not ideal, but it is indicating those pressures, cost pressures in the market and the affordability of homes for lower income families. So our vehicle registrations did weaken in the June quarter. Uh, new car registrations down 16.3%. This is versus a fall of 19.3% for New Zealand. So higher than the national average and the same holds for commercial vehicles down 48.4% versus 49.4% um, across New Zealand. This is probably as a resulting from risk aversion due to economic conditions, global economic conditions as well as rising costs and interest rates and an aversion to buy. We also had very strong investment in big ticket items last year, so there could just be a concentration of, of investment at an earlier point, but again, we'll be keeping a close eye on that data. Our new car registrations was stronger over the year, up 6.8%, which just shows the relative strength in the previous three quarters relative to the last quarter, and commercial vehicles down 3.6% versus New Zealand at 6.9%. New dwelling consents, we know they've fallen from record highs, so down 17.9% to the year end of July. Palmerston North did peak a lot earlier than the national average, uh, but the national is still increasing by 14.4%, which I will say the Reserve Bank is not very happy about. They're actually wanting to see investment and consumption fall to control inflation. So we're expecting that to follow suit and fall, just as it has here in Palmerston North. In terms of long-term averages, uh, new dwellings do remain above the 10-year average at 426, with a 10-year average of 335. So we're a little bit below the five-year, but as you see, we've had quite a peak there, in particular in 2020 and 2021. But again, another thing that we'll be keeping a close, close eye on. Consent values also follow, follow suit, down 19.4%, basically led by a, a reduction in residential investment, and that compares with a 16.9% increase nationally. Again, on the five-year average. So hardly a crash, but certainly back to the longer-term averages. So in conclusion, uh, despite the economic headwinds that we have, uh, both domestically here in New Zealand and internationally, the city economy is continuing to do quite well. Uh, again, employment and earnings growth are expected to remain high, which will, which will drive consumption, which will support our businesses, of course, and employment levels. Event, event sector is recovering, as we've discussed. Export prices are solid. Long-term investment outlook continues to be incredibly positive, and improving housing affordability affordability will help to bring those workers into the region. Any questions? <clears throat> yes, we have. Thank you, Stacey. That was very quick, but very good. So thank you, and very um, con um, very detailed. So we have got some questions. You're ready for questions. Um, we'll go first with the Mayor. Ho hold on a minute. Hannah's just going to show his face. Okay. <laughs> hold on, Grant. Um, thanks, Madam Chair. You're going to be disappointed because my hand was up from the last time. Sorry. <laughs> Say sorry to Hannah. Sorry, Hannah. Okay, Councillor Beatty. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, Stacey. Stacey, the new commercial vehicle sales, um, a few people I've spoken to have purchased vehicles and they haven't arrived in the country yet, so they wouldn't be registered, would they? Would, so could there be a lag? Absolutely. I'm just making sure that's still going. Yeah, absolutely. That is one of the issues that we're finding. So, and back before 2020, uh, new car registrations and commercial vehicle registrations were quite a, a good early indicator of business and household sentiment. But now there's these other factors at play, such as those supply chain constraints. So we take it, we take it with a grain of salt, and we watch watch the indicators around that. So, and as we can see across the country over the quarter, the June quarter, they have fallen further than what they have here in the city. So that could well be a major contributor to that. Thank you, Councillor Bowen. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Stacey. Uh, my questions are about the major economic events part of the report. Um, I think I struggle a little bit with the definition because obviously we have our own internal major events fund for council, and that's not what this is. Uh, so in 3.2, you define it as you know, significant public participation and regional income. And I wondered, is that 
do people kind of self-select into that category, or is that a definition that we provide for people to report against? Uh, I'll defer to my esteemed colleague, Kian, to answer that question. Thank you. Good afternoon, uh, Madam Chair. Good afternoon, Councillors. Uh, could you Thank repeat you, that Chair. question, please, Councillor? Uh, the, the question was about the definition of major economic events. At 3.2, you do expand on that. And my question was, um, is that a definition that's provided for people to report against or do people self-select into what they think are those categories? Um, thank you for allowing me to answer the question. Uh, when we sent out a survey, we have asked for an indicator of 30,000, I think, uh, of um, benefits. Uh -huh. But because we also wanted to capture any other thing, and during the post-COVID situation or during the COVID situation, there is really nothing much that we could report on. So whatever information I could collect, I have included, okay. which is why sometimes some of the estimated values may not have been estimated because um, A, they, they didn't know how to do it, or, or it could be too small, but we are capturing it and reporting it anyway to be able to show that wide range of events that have been um, happening. You certainly do show a wide range of events. Um, so that probably leads to my next question, which you've talked about there, that economic impact. Uh, you said where possible estimates of economic impact were included. I suppose my question there, was that because they weren't provided or they weren't undertaken? Um, we are in a stage of trying to come up with a, a more standardised way of estimating, and I have not uh, provided this in greater detail, mainly because uh, our events team have recently used a, an estimation tool with event economics where we are trying to standardise. So this, this compilation is based on the estimates from event economics, which is estimating cost-benefit analysis versus an older version that we have used before that is developed by Ernst and & Young, and that has been used uh, for the Sport Manawatu as well as for the venues. So uh, moving forward, we would like to be able to standardise that so that we have a common pool of uh, data to be able to help us estimate what are the values. That sounds really positive, thank you. Um, and the last was just a question of detail around the Festival of Racing, where there's an Asterix in increase in regional income. Are you able to explain that? That's on uh, page two, page 47, page two of the attachment. I think that's still to come. I think that waiting for Luke to fill that detail in because they're waiting for racing to give that information. That's what I understand. I've been part of some of those emails. Is that right, Kian? Are you waiting for the information to come through? Yes. Uh, at the time when they submitted the report um, or submitted the survey, the information was not available, so we have uh, make a note. Thank you. Thank it's you. coming Thank through you, from racing to Luke, and I think it's got to then be submitted, and I think that's what I understand. Can't wait. Thanks. <laughs> Um, Councillor Barrett. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, thank you, Stacey, and, and welcome, and Kian as well. Uh, Stacey, the question's, I guess, principally around scope um, in terms of what sits in this economic monitor space, and, and my this point of reference around that's New Zealand Treasury over recent years has, has kind of taken a broadened scope of of kind of economic analysis and, and has what's called a living standard framework now, which you're probably aware of. You're coming into this role and, and, and coming into this kind of, um, I guess, existing reporting space. Are there any parallel opportunities kind of at a city level to think about kind of relensing some of this in a way that might, um, uh, I guess, broaden broaden our outlook a little bit and also potentially link to kind of some of our broader strategic direction? In a word, yes. So I have done uh, a lot of business case and economic case development. We use a lot of different tools, which includes wellbeing analysis across the four wellbeings uh, in terms to support decision making. Sorry, could you just put your mic a little bit closer? It was on, it was just okay. too far away from you. So if you pull it towards you, that'll work a whole lot better. There we go. 
Yeah, so, so that's something that I've done a lot of work on and um, did it within my master's degree and in my previous employment, a lot of business case work to support strategic decision making. So that's certainly something um, that we plan to use my skills for. And in terms of the living standards framework, I have been very keen on learning it uh, in depth. I am in the early stages of teaching myself that. So I have used it on one business case, uh, economic case, uh, development before, but very keen to use the breadth of economic analysis to support decision making in the council. Great. And in terms of council direction, it's, it sounds like you're kind of in train already with some of that thinking. And mm -hmm. and can we, I guess, therefore expect some evolution in terms of what we're seeing? Absolutely. I think with the quarterly reporting, this is my view currently, is that that serves the purpose of providing up to date information. Uh, for the councillors to understand what's going on right here, right now, and how that's impacting on our communities. But in terms of the wider strategic or the high level st strategic um, decision making, then other types of analysis are appropriate. Great, thank you. Madam Chair. Councillor Butt. Thank you, Madam Chair, and welcome, and thank you, Stacey. Uh, when we say rental value drop, does it really mean that the rents have gone down or there are empty rental properties in town? Yes, that, that is something that we do not actually know. So what we know is that from the rental stock, and we call it the formal rental stock because it is uh, rental properties that have bonds lodged against them, and sometimes we have informal rental stock that is, that is rented out to families and households without bonds being lodged against them. The only thing we can monitor on a, on a monthly basis is the formal stock. We only have a chance to monitor the informal stock uh, at census time. So that just shows that there's been a reduction in properties rented on the formal market. So a reduction in rents that are, or bonds that have been lodged uh, to the tenancy services Thank in you. the area. Thank you, Stacey and Kian. There's no more questions, Great. so thank you very much. Thank you very much for your first report to Council, Stacey. It was very good. Great, thank, thank you. you. So first off, I'd like to uh, move that recommendation that's on page 29 and look for a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Dennison. Um, that the committee received the report titled Summary Report on June 2022, Thomas North Quarterly Economic Monitor and Major Events Held During the Year to June 2022 for Information. Have we got any comments on that? Um, first off is the Mayor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, look, a, a few of us would have, would have uh, heard a little, little bit of this at, at Joint Strategic, but it's nice to have a, a, a city lens over it more so. Um, I really do think it, and thanks to Stacey and Kian for um, bringing, bringing this forward, and I do think um, welcome to the team um, Stacey, I think uh, you, you're well known to us through the Joint Strategic, but uh, it's nice to um, have you working um, specifically on the city side as well. I think it does show the benefits of having a really diverse economy. Uh, and, and I say this a lot, but it sometimes um, doesn't get well, um, I suppose, profiled that if we were just based on purely, say, the primary industries or um, just government, then we may be in for some shocks. But because we have so many eggs in a rather large basket, it just it shelters us um, and actually in, continues that prosperity right across many different um, sectors of, of that wider economy. Uh, the low unemployment, um, I'm amazed at the low unemployment. It's, um, I think it's the lowest on, 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 um, on record ever. Um, we're well placed too to take up that migration which is desperately needed in some of our sectors and I think it goes hand in hand with the, the uh, former report uh, around internationalism. We're not seen as a provincial backwater, um, in fact recently at a roadshow in Auckland there was quite a lot of take up um, of uh, new migrants that had come in through Auckland and then looking uh, to the regions and Palmerston North uh, was one of their top picks. And I think, again, they feel comfortable coming to um, a small um, uh, boutique, but um, uh, international um, focused city. And I think we've got to have those people in our healthcare and some of our more skilled um, workplaces um, where we desperately need, uh, where we've got a labour shortage. I think it's great that the event sectors come back. 
Uh, we all know that. Uh, we're seeing it. We're feeling it. Uh, and that's fantastic. And also just those trade um, and export conditions are really favourable at the moment. But there are some headwinds, um, and we're seeing that uh, not only in the in the food prices, the cost of living, um, and housing, um, but I do note that there is some changes to that housing, um, those housing conditions, um, in a more positive light for Palmerston North. But uh, we desperately do need more houses built um, and uh, uh, to accommodate uh, more people. But I think overall the city's really well placed. And again, just come back to that diversity uh, that we have, not only in our population, uh, but also in our economy. And I think it just, uh, it, it, was, it really does uh, give us a great platform. So thank you again uh, to the officers. Um, yeah, really good report. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Barrett. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. And yes, um, good to see um, the information in the report. Uh, the comment that I principally wanted to make was just around I'm feeling quite heartened by what I heard in terms of um, response around broadening the um, lens around economic analysis. I think um, it's it's helpful to know um, whether the economy is working or not, but principally we want to know whether it's working for us. And, and that is about alignment to our strategic direction. Um, so yes, GDP is doing something, but how well is that aligned to our strategic direction? Yes, the city economy is working. How well is it working, for instance, for new migrants? These are, these are key questions that are actually quite fundamental to our strategic direction and ones that I hope a, a, a broadened lens of, of economic analysis can give us um, some insight into over time. So very heartened by that and look forward to um, the evolution of these um, reports and information in the future. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Bowen. Thank you, Madam Chair. And um, it's always interesting to receive this report with its focus on the economic impact for major events in our region. And I would echo the comments Councillor Barrett makes about the, the, the broader impact analysis of some of these things, although this clearly brings an economic lens to it. I was um, encouraged by the comments about how that economic impact assessment will be standardised going forward so we can start to pull out actually what that economic impact is across these really diverse basket of events to see how that is best serving our city and where that um, impact lies. But uh, thank you for the report. It led for very interesting and encouraging reading in some difficult times. Thanks. Thank you. Oh, Councillor Finlay. Thank you. I, I, it was quite interesting to see, um, when you have a look at the indicator, how we are doing better than the rest of the country, really. Looking at um, employment, we've got a lower level than the rest of the country, according to this. And also house values. Our house values haven't uh, changed that much compared to the national or even uh, Wanganui Manawatu. So I, I think we're holding our own quite well as a city. And um, I just, just wanted to comment that, that where we look around everybody else, uh, there's depression. We've got no reason to be depressed. We're quite a, we've got a lot of positives in our report here. Thank you. There's no further comments. Um, I'd just like to say thank you to the officers, uh, particularly Stacey and Kian, for both of you are putting you into the roles. So thank you very much for putting the report together. On a personal note, I am busily working with Immigration New Zealand, trying to get a chef to come into New Zealand. So it is pretty hard out there in the employment scene. So, um, But um, I do agree with a lot of what has been written in the report because a lot of it is running true in the employment area out in this economy. But anyway, um, no more comments, so I'd like to, you all now to vote. And that's passed 14 votes to naught, and so we'll um, now move to the next item which is the work schedule, so that's on page 49. Have you got any comments to make, David? Uh, no, comment, no comment, Madam Chair. No comments from David. Has anybody got any issues they want to bring up with the work schedule? <sighs> Councillor Johnson. Um, it's just a question, Madam Chair, around the sector profiles. Um, so, and correct me if I'm wrong, they've all been completed, have they not? The, the construction agriculture, we've had them through once. Right. 
might get Julie McDonald to answer that question, if that's okay. We've had some of them through. Kia ora, Councillor. Um, yes, the, the, there has been an ongoing review of each of the profiles being updated. Um, just if I might add a comment, that's one of the things that we're looking at to see what might be the most appropriate work plan going forward, kind of um, echoing some of the comments that Councillor Barrett's made. We're looking at um, the economic role altogether and whether the profiles are the best way to spend our time um, and what role they have and how they might be done and how they also relate to the role that CEDA has. Okay, well, that's answered a whole lot of my questions. Thank you. Promise, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah I think good. that's why you've written the word terms of reference in that column there, because you're that now, would that be clear? Because why you've written the word terms of reference? No. Sorry. Oh, they're in the committee's terms of reference. Mm. Okay, sorry. Okay, anyway. Sorry, that's, thank you. Thank you, Julie. That has answered some questions that I didn't even ask. <laughs> okay. Um, there's no further questions. So looking to move that. Councillor Dennison moved it, seconded by Councillor Hancock. We'll look, uh, any comments on that? No, we'll look to vote. That's passed unanimously. Thank you everyone and thank you very much for attendance at this committee meeting since it was the final one. Judith, you turned up timely for the final one. But thank you everyone. Lovely to see you all here and um, have a lovely afternoon.